Daf Yomi, Tracti Bavakama, 59b, page 59b. Um, the last two words on the 59a was Eliezer Zeira. Um, Eliezer Zeira was wearing black shoes. Havi Masai Masani Ukmi. Eliezer Zeira, top of 59b, was wearing black shoes unlike the Jewish custom at the time, and standing in the market of Nerda. Officials of the house of the Exilarch, of the Reish Galuta, the Exilarch found him and said to him, What is different about you that causes you to wear these shoes? He said to them, I am wearing them because I am in mourning over the destruction of the Temple of Jerusalem. And so I wear black shoes, as is the custom of mourners, they said to him, Are you a man of such importance to publicly mourn over Jerusalem? They thought that it was simply presumptuousness on his part. Since he was acting against the prevalent Jewish custom, they brought him to the prison and incarcerated him. <coughs> Eliezer Zeira said to them, I am a great man, a scholar, and it is fitting for me to mourn publicly over the destruction of, the te- of Jerusalem. They said to him, How do we know that you are a scholar? He said to them, Either you ask of me a matter of halakha, and I will answer you, or I will ask you a matter of halakha, and you will answer me. They said to him, You ask. He said to them, With regard to one who cuts a cluster of flowers on the stem of a date palm belonging to another, what is he required to pay? They said to him, He pays the value of the date stem. He said to them, But ultimately, they will become ripe dates, which are worth more. They said to him, If so, he pays the value of the future dates. He said to them, But he did not take ripe dates from the other person. So how can the court obligate him to pay? For the damage he did not cause. They said to Eliezer Zira, You tell us the correct appraisal for the date stem. He said to them, The court appraises the damage relative to a similar piece of land sixty times the size. They said to them, They said to him, Who says an opinion as you do, so that you can prove you are correct? He said to them, Shmuel is alive, and his court exists. You can ask him. They sent the question before Shmuel, together with the ruling of Eliezer Zeira. Shmuel said to them, He is saying well to you, because the halacha is as he says. The appraisal is relative to an area 60 times greater. Upon hearing this, the officials of the Exilarch realized he was a great man, and they released him. The Mishnah 55b teaches that Rabbi Shimon says, if the animal ate ripe produce, the owner pays the value of the ripe produce eaten. What is the reason for Rabbi Shimon's opinion? This, that the merciful one states in the Torah, and it fed in another's field. Ubir b'steacher. Exodus 22.4, which teaches that The court appraises the damage relative to another field. This statement applies specifically with regard to produce that requires a field to grow. For one's animal eating is this produce, which do not require the field in order to ripen further, the animal's owner must pay their value as they are. Rav Huna Bar says that Rav Rav Yermia Bar Abba says, Rav judged a practical halakha, on a certain issue in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Meir, despite the fact that in general the halakha is not in accordance with his opinion. And furthermore, he ruled that the halakha is in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Shimon, even though, in that case, he was a minority opinion. Rav Huna bar explains, Rav judged a practical halakha in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Meir, as it is taught in a Braita. In the case of a field designated 
by its owner as a lien for his wife's marriage contract, which he subsequently wants to sell. If he wrote a document of sale to a first buyer, but his wife did not sign for him to endorse the sale, and subsequently the husband wrote a document of sale to a second buyer, and his wife signed for him, she thereby loses the lien of her marriage contract since the sale is effective and she can no longer collect from this field. This is the statement of Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Yehuda says that she can say, I did it only to please my husband, but I did not mean it and never intended to forgo my rights. What claim do you, the purchasers, have against me? Therefore, the lien is still in effect. Rav judged the case in accordance with the, opinions of, with the opinion of Rabbi Meir. And Rav ruled that the halacha is in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Shimon, as we learned in the Mishnah. Rabbi Shimon says, <coughs> if one's animal ate ripe produce, the owner pays the value of ripe produce eaten. Therefore, if it ate one seah of produce, he pays the value of one seah of produce. And if it ate two seah, he pays two seah. Although Rabbi Shimon's opinion is the majority one, Rav ruled in accordance with it. it oh, oh, although Rabbi Shimon's opinion is the minority one, Rav ruled in accordance with it. New Mishnah. Hamakdish, Hamakdish betoch, in a case of one who stacks his produce in another's field without permission from the owner of that field, and an animal belonging to the owner of the field acts eats the produce, the owner of the field is exempt, and if the animal is injured by the produce, the owner of the stack is liable. But if he stacks them in that field with permission, the owner of the field is liable for damage cause to the produce. Gemara. The Gemara asks, shall we say that that which we learned in the mission is not in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda Anasi? It's not in the opinion of Rabbi? As if the Mishnah were in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi, doesn't he say a homeowner who gives another permission to bring items into his courtyard is not responsible for them unless the homeowner accepts on himself to safeguard them. The Mishnah does not mention any such acceptance of responsibility. Rav Papa said, Here we are, dealing with the supervisor of the threshing floors to whom people would entrust their produce as since the supervisor says to the owner of the produce, bring it in and stack it. It is as though he had said to him, bring it in and I will supervise it for you. New Mishnah. Mishnah says, one who sends a fire, that is, places a burning object, in the hand of a deaf mute, an imbecile, or a minor, is exempt for any damage later caused by the fire according to human laws, but is liable according to the laws of heaven. If he sent it in the hand of a halakhali competent person, the halakhali competent person is liable, not the one who sent him. If one person brought the fire, and one person subsequently brought the wood, causing the fire to spread, the one who brought the wood is liable, for any damage caused. Conversely, if one person first brought the wood and subsequently another person brought the fire, the one who brought the fire is liable since it was he who actually kindled the wood. In another, If another came and fanned the flame as a result of the fire uh, as a result of the fire and spread and caused damage, the one who fanned it is liable since he is the proximate cause of damage of the damage. If the wind fan the flames, all the people involved are exempt, since none of them actually cause the damage. Gemara. Reish Lakish says in the name of Hizkiah, they taught 
that one who stands fire in the hand of deaf mute, an imbecile or minor, is exempt only when he conveyed to him a glowing coal, and one of these people fanned it himself and set it alight. But if one conveyed a torch to a deaf mute, imbecile or minor, the one who gave it to him is liable. What is the reason for this halakha? The action of the one who gave it to him directly caused the fire to spread. And Rabbi Yochanan says, even if he conveyed a torch to him, he is exempt. What is the reason? It is the tongs of the deaf mute that cause the damage, since torches do not cause fires on their own, and the one who gives dangerous objects to a deaf mute is not rendered liable for the damage caused unless he conveys branches to him.